September 11th, World Conquest through World Jewish Government, the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. Mr. Henry Ford, an interview published in the New York World, February 17th, 1921. The only statement I care to make about the protocols is they fit in with what's going on. They are 16 years old and they have fitted the world situation up to this time, and they fit it now. Who are the elders? 300 men, each of whom knows all the others, govern the fate of the European continent, and they elect their successors from their entourage. These 300 people are all Jews. The administration was always kept secret, even from the Jewish nation itself. Protocol number one, the best results in governing them are attained by violence and terrorism. The political has nothing in common with the moral. The ruler who is governed by the moral is not a skilled politician and is therefore unstable on his throne. He who wishes to rule must have recourse to both cunning and make-believe. Our power in the present tottering condition of all forms of power will be more invincible than any other because it will remain invisible until the moment when it has gained such strength that no cunning can any longer undermine it. <clears throat> Out of the temporary evil we are now compelled to commit will emerge the good of unshakable rule, which will restore the regular course of machinery brought to an, of, of national life brought to a knot by liberalism. The result justifies the means. Let us, however, in our plans, direct our attention not so much to what is good and moral as to what is necessary and useful. For the sake of victory, we must keep to the program of violence and make-believe. Protocol number two. In the hands of states of today, there is a great force that creates the movement of thought of the people, and that is the press. The Goyim states have not known how to make use of this force, and it has fallen into our hands. Through the press, we have gained the power to influence while remaining ourselves in the shade. Thanks to the press, we've got the gold in our hands, notwithstanding that we've had to gather it out of the oceans of blood and tears. But it has paid us, though we have sacrificed many of our people. Each victim on our side is worth in the sight of God a thousand Goyim. We support communism. The aristocracy, which enjoyed the, by law the labor of workers, was interested in seeing the workers were well-fed, healthy, and strong. We are interested in just the opposite, the killing out of the going. Protocol number four. Gentile masonry blindly serves as a screen for us and our objects. But the plan of action of our force and its very abiding place remain, remains for the whole people an unknown mystery. In order to give the Goyim no time to think and take note, their minds must be diverted towards industry and trade. Thus, all nations will be swallowed up in the pursuit of gain, and in the race for it will not take note of their common foe. The lower classes of the Goyim will follow our lead against our rivals for power, the intellectuals of the Goyim. Protocol number five. Our kingdom will be distinguished by such a despotism of such magnificent proportions as to be at any moment in every place in any position to wipe out any Goyim who oppose us by deed or word. <clears throat> Masses led by lies. For a time, perhaps, we might be successfully dealt with by a coalition of the Goyim of all the world. But from this danger, we are secured by discord existing among them, th whose roots are so deeply seated they can never now be plucked up. We have set one against another, the personal, personal and national reckonings of the Goyim, religious and race hatreds, which we have fostered into a huge growth in the course of the past 20 centuries. This is the reason why there is not one state which would anywhere receive support if it were to raise its arm, for every one of them must bear in mind that any agreement against us would be unprofitable to itself. We are too strong. There is no evading our power. The nations cannot come to even an inconsiderable private agreement without our secretly having a hand in it. It is more important to disarm the peoples than to lead them into war. There is nothing more dangerous than personal initiative. If it is genius behind it, such initiative can, be, can do more than can be done by millions of people among whom we have sown discord. Protocol number six, we shall enslave Gentiles. The Goyim will bow down before us, if for no other reason but to get the right to exist. Protocol number seven, universal war. We must be in a position to respond to every act of opposition by war with the neighbors of that country which dares to oppose us. But if these neighbors should also venture to stand collectively together against us, then we must offer a resistance by a universal war. We must compel the governments of the Goyim to take action in the direction favored by our widely conceived plan, by what we shall represent as public opinion, secretly promoted by us through the means of that so-called great power, the press, which, with a few exceptions that may be disregarded, is already entirely in our hands. In a word, to sum up our system of keeping the governments of the Goyim in Europe in check, we shall show our strength to one of them by terrorist attempts, 
and to all if we allow a possibility of a general rising against us. We shall respond with the guns of America, China, or Japan. Protocol number eight. We must arm ourselves with all the weapons which our opponents might employ against us. Everything will be settled by the question of figures. For a time, until there will no longer be any risk in entrusting responsible posts in our state to our brother Jews, we shall put them in the hands of persons whose past and reputation are such that between them and the people lies an abyss, persons who in case of disobedience to our instructions must face criminal charges or disappear. This in order to make them defend our interests to their last gasp. Protocol 9, Jewish superstate, our super government dictatorship, the weapons in our hands, our limitless ambitions, burning greediness, merciless vengeance, hatreds and malice. It is from us that all engulfing terror proceeds, but we will not give them peace until they openly acknowledge our international super government and with submissiveness. The money is all in our hands. You may say that the Goyim will rise upon us, arms in hand, if they guess what's going on before the time comes. But in the West, we have against this a maneuver of such appalling terror that the very stoutest hearts quail. Protocol number 10, our goal, world power. To secure this, we must have everybody vote without distinction of classes and qualifications in order to establish an absolute majority which cannot be got from the educated property classes. In this way, by inculcating all in a sense of self-importance, we shall destroy among the Goyim the importance of the family and its educational value and remove the possibility of individual minds splitting off. For the mob handled by us will not let them come to the front nor even give them a hearing. It is accustomed to listen to us only who pay it for obedience and attention. In this way we shall create a blind mighty force which will never be in a position to move in any direction without the guidance of our agents set at its head by the mob, as leaders of the mob. The people will submit to this regime because it will know that upon these leaders will depend its earnings, gratifications and the receipt of all kinds of benefits. We name the presidents. The Chamber of Deputies will provide for, cover for, will protect, will elect presidents. But we shall take from it the right to propose new or make changes in existing laws. For this right will be given to the responsible president, a puppet, in our hands. We shall destroy abolition of every kind of constitution. And then the time is come to turn every form of government into our despotism. Protocol number 11. We are the wolves. The goyim are a flock of sheep and we are their wolves. And you know what happens when the wolves get a hold of the flock. There is another reason also why they will close their eyes. For we shall keep promising to give them back all the liberties we have taken away as soon as we have quelled the enemies of peace and tamed all parties. These goy cattle. God has granted us, his chosen people, the gift of dispersion, and in this, which appears in all eyes to be our weakness, has come forth our strength, which has now brought us to the threshold of sovereignty all over the world. Protocol 12. We control the press. Not a single announcement will reach the public without our control. Attacks upon us will also serve another purpose, namely that our subjects will be convinced to the existence of full freedom of speech, and so give our agents on occasion to affirm that all organs which oppose us are empty babblers. Only lies printed. We shall have a sure triumph over our opponents, since they will not have at their disposition organs of the press in which they can give full and final exp expression to their views. Protocol number 13. Who will ever suspect that all of these peoples were stage managed by us according to a political plan which no one has so much as guessed at in the course of many centuries? Protocol number 14. When we come into our kingdom, it will be undesirable for us that there should exist any other religion than ours. We shall forbid Christ. Protocol number 15. No regard must be paid to the victims who fall. They suffer for the well-being of the future, the attainment of that well-being. Secret societies. Meantime, however, until we come into our kingdom, we shall act in the contrary way. We shall create and multiply Freemasonic lodges in all the countries of the world, absorb into them all who may become or who are prominent in public activity. For these lodges, we shall find our principal intelligence office and means of influence. But if there should arise in its midst a plot, then at the head of that plot will be no other than one of our most trusted servants. It is natural that we and no other should lead Masonic activities.